you guys, Spartan117GW here today, and I want to talk about one of the helmets that I've been running for a while. This is the MTech Flux. It's the carbon fiber version of the helmet, uh, and it's been out for a little while, and I wanted to review it after I'd give it some extensive running time, at least enough to compare it to what I've ran with the Team Wenny prior. Now, this is a very, very cool helmet. One of the biggest advantages is that they've basically been able to do what um, Cry couldn't do with the airframe by making the single shell but have such great coverage uh, on the head. Uh, basically, what Cry tried to do is they tried to do a, uh, a helmet that really came down and kind of came right down to the base of the neck. But they kind of had problems specifically with their ballistic design because they couldn't figure out a way how to make a ballistic shell in that manner. MTech more or less solved the problem. Now I know this isn't the ballistic version, but it is good and important to note that the ballistic version is practically identical to the carbon fiber. Uh, this one's actually a little better example because it's naked. There's obviously you no know, helmet cover on here. To kind of give you an idea what the base uh, flux looks like, obviously this is the one that's not minted, uh, but as you can see, very beautiful curvature here. You also have these rails on here, which are fantastic. It's a basically boltless design. There's no holes that go through the helmet. It uh, increases structural integrity and also, you know, any, just any time you don't have holes going through your helmet. It's a good thing. Uh, so basically it uses a slot design. So all these bolts are held in via slots that are more or less like molded into the helmet. Um, and by that, you basically have a very easy way to attach everything without really having to mess with anything in here like you would normally do on other helmets has a Wilcox shroud on the front, which comes standard. Uh, you also have your little retention points right here, which are good to go. The Velcro pattern, I kind of love it. Uh, there's a couple things I wish I could change too. Uh, for one, the uh, these points here on the sides, they don't really perfectly match when it comes to like flags and stuff like that. So you kind of have to fit, find some patches that really fit um, the helmet uh, in that regard. Of course, on top, you've got more than enough for any kind of strobe or ire or IFF device that you want to put on here. There's more than enough room. Uh, also, one great thing is that the uh, rails here, they're all m lock So if you have like, for example, the Kinect development group Kinect, uh, that'll like, it'll just clip on here, then you can clip it on your weapon. Uh, there's a lot of really good things happening with m lock and actually the more and more I'm exposed to M-Lock, the happier I am that the helmet and the rifle basically use the same attachment furniture, which you could still add Picatinny on here if you really want to. The helmet is extremely, extremely light. Uh, I mean, it's so light you would think it's like an airsoft helmet. And what is cool is that they are working on a polymer version uh, that's a little more economical for those who don't need the carbon fiber. Uh, but I will say the carbon fiber is absolutely fantastic. Now, inside there, was, there have been some uh, working or work in progress kind of developments. Uh, they used to have pads made by Team Wendy, but of course they're changing to their own pads. But the easiest comparison, at least with the Team Wendy family products, would basically be the pads are very similar to what you'd see on like the LTP or their ballistic. Um, so if you have one of those, that's kind of one easy way to compare. But I do like how, I mean, it kind of almost looks like a scorpion, but you have this padding configuration that just really covers the whole gambit and I like how obviously you have the second layer of pads to adjust and kind of you know spread out the pressure points a little bit and it's extremely comfortable to wear I've worn these helmets for hours and hours and hours on end uh, it's just like once you once it goes on your head it feels really balanced I like the cut I like the curvature uh, and it looks really good too obviously you don't want a helmet that doesn't look good now, there's only one set of helmet covers available, I believe through their website. There's three different colors, black, green, and coyote. And there was a limited run of M81 that's running around there, out there somewhere. But this is the coyote version, as you can see. Uh, the fitment isn't like absolutely fantastic, but considering that there aren't too many options out there, it's actually a pretty nice option for the MTech, and it actually has a little cutouts for you can run um, cables and such. So when it comes to aftermarket accessories, while there isn't a vast majority out there, you know, people are working on more helmet covers and stuff like that. But like I said before, because it uses Zemlock, you can attach things. And this is actually one of their uh, 3D printed um, Peltor adapters that are on um, the helmet. Uh, you can actually get them through their website. Uh, I don't have the actual Peltors themselves because I still got to get some new ones. Uh, but this more or less is kind of the configuration that I'm running with right now. The uh, pouch that um, you can get for the MTech 
uh, has a built-in counterweight pouch in it, so it's really nice that it goes along with the helmet. Now, all together, you have a really nice, comfortable, unique design, and I think they've done a really good job with the shell. Uh, and as you can see, it's just, it's beautiful. It's kind of like, if you took an Opscore, a Team Wendy, and an airframe, you combined all the best features, you, this is more or less kind of like what you get, uh, more or less when you get it. Uh, now, there's a couple other helmets coming out. There's the revision, I believe it's called the Basilisk or Battle Skin or something like that. We'll see what happens when that comes out. Now, the uh, bump in carbon fiber market is getting a little bit more crowded, but I think M-Tech has really brought a fantastic um, you know, product to the table. It's really great that um, they're offering it uh, to the civilian market, of course. Uh, and what's also great is that they actually support Airsoft. So uh, those guys have actually come out to a couple different Airsoft games and tried it out. And of course, the helmet is obviously great for pretty much any kind of extreme activities you may be doing, whether it's actually being used in operations, uh, law enforcement, military, uh, contracting, anything you can think of. But fantastic design, I'm definitely digging it. Um, this, by the, way, by the way, is actually one of the versions they had at SHOT Show. This is the Multicam Tropic version. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Uh, this was a prototype, so there's no production one like this. In fact, this is the only one. <laughs> but um, fantastic helmet. If you guys have some time, go ahead and check out M-Tech on their Instagram, social media, and their website. Um, I'm really digging it. So you'll probably be seeing me run both of these two helmets in different configurations in the future. But I just wanna thank you guys for watching. If you have questions, comments, go ahead and throw it in the comment section. Also, a friendly reminder, there's patches and all kinds of cool stuff going on in the description, including a whole section dedicated to uh, discounts and other kind of cool swag that you can get. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time, and I'll see you on the battlefield.